Hey guys, we're at this house in Fountain Valley and they have a problem with their electrical. Number one, their outlets are really old and they're stab locks where you stab the wires in the back. And their main issue is that a uh, microwave, when they turn it on, draws down on the lights. It's on a 15, it looks like somebody brought a circuit in for the... Um, for the um microwave and they put it on a 15 amp breaker with um, 14 gauge wire so what we're going to do is we're going to simulate a new circuit we're going to put a 20 amp in because it has room we're going to take a 12 gauge extension cord and rig it up to the panel like it was a brand new circuit we're going to run it to the microwave and see if that relieves the problem because either there's a short on that circuit even though it should be on a 20 amp um, it's on a 15 but there could be a, a short on the circuit number one and or it's over pulling because that thing is pulling like seven or eight um, amps uh, something like that I'm gonna check the amp what it's pulling on the microwave but with that being said it's pulling a lot of amperage and that could be dimming the lights because they got it on a circuit with lights, which it shouldn't be. So if everything goes well with our simulation, um, I'm sure they probably got test kits for this and equipment that I don't know how to use, but I know how to do it the old fashioned way. And so basically I'm just going to run in a, an extension cord and I'm going to um, go ahead and make sure it's 12 gauge wire on the extension it's on a 20 amp breaker we're going to simulate it if everything goes good and it relieves the problem we're going to go ahead and add another circuit in just for that microwave we'll pull it through the attic and do it the right way with some 12.2 um, Romex and we'll do it the right way this is just a good way to see if it's going to work if it doesn't work then there's got to be some sort of loose neutral somewhere and when the microwave draws down it kind of creates a short and and the amperage goes way up usually if you have a short amperage will go way up on an item so we really don't know what we got but we're going to play with it and then on top of it the owner gave us permission to go ahead the owner gave us permission to here's Vinny. The owner gave us permission to go ahead and um, change all the outlets and switches while we're at it. Hopefully, we'll find something there. All right, guys. I'll talk to you inside. Okay, Vinny's got that lid off. We do have room. We can put a new 20 right here. And um, when we're all done, we'll make sure that this 20 doesn't make the have more amperage on one side well, well right now we just want to put a circuit in and see if it clears up the issue with the um, microwave here's our extension this is a 12 gauge rig here um, you can see it's uh, extra thick and we got a little plug in here we use this a lot um, we use this from time to time just to temporarily run a circuit to make sure everything is good to go um, I'm sure there's test equipment to do that, but we just, we'll it's the way we do it. Okay, Vinny just, um, Vinny's got this new breaker in. It's a 20 amp. We pulled out one of these empty guys right here, put a 20. Now we're going to hook up our extension cord and we're going to go ahead with our black here. And then our white will go over here somewhere. And then it looks like um, this is bonded. It has a ground going to it. The, um, um, so we'll just go with our ground there too. Um, there's not a special. Well, if it's your main panel, then it's bonded. Meaning your ground and your neutrals are all on one bar. Um, on a sub panel, you won't be bonded. On a sub panel, you'll have all your neutrals going to one spot and then all your ground wires would be going to another one. So in this case, we're just going to go ahead and make it easy and put the white and the green on the, the main bar there and we should be good to go. Okay, we're going to get that set up and we'll get back with you. Okay guys, Vinny's got everything rigged up here and the breaker is in the off position right here. And basically what we're going to do is we're going to hook it up to the microwave and we'll see if we can give you a little example. When the microwave goes on right now, it 
either dims down on this light here or it goes brighter one of the two um well let's go ahead and we'll run it real quick to see what we get okay um go ahead and turn it on Vinny. let's see what the lights do do you have it on hot there you can see the lights go dim and they don't go back up turn it off you can see it just went back up okay we're going to see now by plugging in this microwave into this here on its own circuit if it draws down because this is on a 15 amp breaker with 14 gauge wire on the same circuit as the lighting and that should never be okay so now we got a nice clean circuit we're going to hook it up and see what it does okay okay we got the um we had to get an extension this is also a um, 12 gauge um, stranded onto this so that's going to simulate a brand new circuit um, go ahead and put it on 20 seconds and let's see if it draws down before you push that hold on if it draws down if it doesn't draw down then we were pulling too much amperage on this 15 amp lighting circuit if it does pull down then we've got a short somewhere because if it pulls down on its own circuit there's a loose neutral i say a neutral because neutral is on that bar and they're all sharing a neutral bar so something is going to be shortened out somewhere in order to fluctuate this because it's all sharing if it was a hot wire it'd be one circuit but all her lights in this house goes down it doesn't matter what room you got if you got a light on it draws down go ahead and um hit it Vinny. Look at that. Want me to put the power level high? Yeah, turn it off. Okay. Hi, start. Look at that. Doesn't do anything. You want to stop it? No. Let it run. Okay, we're going to let this run um, for a few minutes and make sure none of the wires get too hot and check the temperature on the breaker and stuff like that. Just for my own information. Um, now watch, put it on, put some water in there, gonna get a cup of water. Uh, that way we're not running the microwave dry. Two minutes or what? Uh, put it seven minutes. Now, I'll tell you when to hit it. Okay. Okay, go ahead and start it. Look at that. Okay, the first thing we're gonna do guys, seeing what we see, we're gonna run a brand new circuit straight to this microwave through the attic on some 12-2 Romex and that's gonna fix the issue of all her lights drawing down and we're gonna change every outlet and every switch in this house because they're stab locks or the ones that you stab in the back and she's already had two or three outlets blow up because of the wires breaking loose and I know somewhere we're gonna find some loose neutrals okay guys he's gonna check the amperage and see what we're pulling there 13.2 which is normal we got it on high power all the way on um, before it was reading about 19 amps when it was on the other circuit which when you have high amperage uh, sometimes that means it's short or sometimes it's just overdrawn um, so so far we got our new breaker here and um, we got everything going good we got 13 amps on the um, pull and all the wires are nice and cold they're not even warm so this is what we're gonna do we're gonna pull a new circuit and we're gonna run it through the attic and put in a new outlet over there cap off the other one and, um, and then on the second day we'll go ahead and change every single outlet and switch in this house okay guys um, Vinny's up in the attic gonna go check the panel out coming up but our hole is going to be where we need to make is um, right there towards the stern of the sailboat, the last sailboat. That's where the center of the panel is. We're thinking it's probably going to be easier to use, make holes in the drywall. That way, when we patch them, um, we can just paint this whole wall right here and be done with it. The stucco is a little bit more harder for everything. Um, so if we can get it through the drywall side, we will. And then we're going to just run it directly over to this microwave 
we're going to cap off the outlet that's in there now so it's never going to be used for anything and then we'll probably uh, put a blank plate and then we'll put an outlet next to it otherwise um, we could just cap the wires off in there and use the same box um, haven't decided yet so we'll go with that for now okay Vinny's up there somewhere in the attic looking for things um, Gonna check things out. Alicia's over here already starting the outlets. Alicia's gonna start replacing the outlets for today and tomorrow. Say hi, Al. Hello. This one already done. Oh, you got one already done? Where'd you do that one? I don't believe you. I wanna see it. Oh, you did the switch already. Cool. Yeah, do all the switches and outlets each room one at a time. And look, and please, if you find anything that's bad, um, you know, and, um, they do have um, ground wires in there, right? Uh, someone connected, yeah, the blue one. They kind of tie into it right here. Oh, they tied into it. Yeah, okay, into it. good. So I'm just making sure it's tight. Okay, because if not, we'll add a ground wire to the box. Uh -huh. Well, I don't think it matters because it's Romex. So grounding to the box doesn't make anything. No, that's a plastic box. Too, yeah, it's a plastic box, so that doesn't mean anything. But there's a loose. Um, Unless you just a, want to ground it to ground it. There's a there, loose, you know, it's short. Uh -huh. So they kind of tie into that one. It's okay. a blue wire, but that's my ground. Yeah. Well, as long as you know what it's used for. Right. So, all right. Check back with you later. All right, Vinny, go get one more piece of plastic. Let's see what you got here. He's got that tarped off. He's got the wall tarped off. He's going to go get one more piece of plastic to cover the carpeting right here. And then we're going to put a hole. It looks like somebody's already been in the panel. Look at this big hole right here. We won't leave that like that. We'll fix that and texture it. Um, but, yeah, somebody's already been in there. Me and Vinny decided not to use a hole saw or a keyhole saw or a osculator tool because sometimes we've opened up walls and the wires are pressed right against the drywall. I mean like instead of setting in the center of the wall, they're actually bowing into the drywall. We've seen that and we've gotten lucky not to nick any. So this time we decided just to take a utility knife and just take our time and um, inch our way through it. Yeah, score it and not go all the way through with the blade. And then we'll just go ahead and pull it out. That way we don't run no risk of nicking any blades. I mean, nicking any wires. Alrighty, we got Alicia back there changing outlets. Getting into tight spots. So anyway, she's in there doing it. She's getting everything done. She's place all the outlets so how you doing back there girl i'm doing okay just making sure i don't want to lose their nice. cool all right there's a switch all right that hole's looking good i'd rather he take his time that way we don't nick any wires because you nick a wire and what are you gonna do tape it up you know I mean, you do what you can. You know, you can't put a, they can't split it. You can't put a box in the wall. You can't, you know what I mean? You just got to take your time and be careful. It's easy to run a wire. It's, this is the hard part, making sure you don't cause any damage on your way in. Okay, guys. We didn't realize that we had conduit there. I don't know why we thought we had Romex, but anyway. Right where he's cutting, there's another hole, another knockout available for us. So he's going to cut like a little L so we can get to that knockout. And then we're going to pull the meter off. And we're going to put a connector and run a Romex um, right next to those conduits. And up and through the attic, I guess. Okay, guys. We've got our connector in the box. Our connector's in. You can probably see it right there um right there that connector's in now um i'm gonna pass Vinny up some wire and he's gonna pull it all the way across over there into the kitchen through the attic we're gonna put a hole where the microwave is up in the cabinet above 
So anyway, that was hard trying to, we're trying to do this without taking the meter off because the meter's locked and we don't want to have to call and um, have them come and unlock it. So we're just being cautious and doing it with the meter on. Okay, Vinny's feeding some wire up there for me. We got our Romex down here. Move over here. <laughs> that axle. We got our Romex ready to go. He's going to go up there and we're going to pull it through. Alicia's over here changing outlets galore. She's done two bedrooms and she's done the kitchen and she's done the switches over here with GFCIs. GFCIs over there. Uh, she's under there now. Um, taking care of underneath the thing here. Going to town. I'm gonna take this. Okay guys, he's gonna put a hole. Show him what you're using to put the hole. Okay, you see it's a cutout. Okay, give it hell, Vinny. Okay. Works good. Cool. It's the first time we used one of those. Let me see the hole. Let me see if I can zoom in. Let's see here. Oh, yeah, that looks good. All right. Move your head, babe. baby. I'm too old to be my baby now, but... Yeah, you're just used to talking <laughs> Alright guys, Vinny's pulling the cable. Um, he's all the way across over here. He put his hole, as we saw before, right here. And now he's going to drill a hole in the top plate in the attic and pass the wire down and then we'll put a box with a heavy duty 20 amp outlet you know what's funny guys if they would have just pulled their electrical for this microwave from this oven right here this is on its own dedicated circuit all they would have had to do was pull an out pull a cable from here to here and we wouldn't have been here and we could have done that too but because we're putting our name on it and they've got a dedicated circuit for this and there's room over there. We're having fun just fishing the cable from the box to here. I mean, why pull this out? Why pull the oven out and fish a, a wire up? You know, this way we're for sure. They both got their dedicated circuits. We're all good. There's room in the panel. There's room for two more breakers and not that they're going to need it, but you know. So we'll put a, we'll pull that outlet out and cap the wires inside and put a blank plate. Okay, guys, Vinny's got the cable through right there, and it goes all the way over to here. And now we're gonna fish it into the panel. So um, we should have this hooked up in the next couple hours or so. Hopefully, we'll see what happens. Um, okay, Vinny's coming down. Well, he's all a mess. He looks a mess. Anyway, he's going to go get some staples to staple down the Romex. That way, um, if he gets that done today, he won't have to go back into the attic tomorrow. All the attic work is done. So basically he's going to get his staples, go staple down the 12 gauge wire and um, be done with the attic. And then the rest will finish tomorrow once we get back here. But we're going to stay here another two or three hours. Hopefully we'll have most of it done. Well, Vinny's up there putting the staples to everything. Um... All right, guys, we got a heavy-duty 20-amp outlet on 12-2 12, 12 wire. We put a, we took the outlet out, cut the wires, wire nutted them, taped them, and then on the inside of this cover, right here on the inside, I, I'll try to slip a picture in there. But, um, well, I probably won't. But in, on the inside of this cover, we wrote, do not use this circuit. It's flagged or flagged for a reason or something i put something in there uh, i think uh, discontinued for a reason 
So anyway, um, that's about it. Now we're going to go over here and we're going to go ahead and um, work that wire into the cabinet without taking the meter off because we'll have to call the guy and he'll have to come and unlock it. And I, I think we can do it without it. Without it. We'll zigzag it, find a way, and if not, we'll have to sweep Vinny up with a dustpan and a broom. All right. Vinny's wiping up the access panel. That way he doesn't leave his fingerprints all over the place. Every time a cable guy goes in there, they always leave fingerprints. We try not to be the same. We try to clean after ourselves. All right, Vinny's got his wire trimmed out. Let's see what you did. Where's oh you got it right there? Okay, yeah, once I nail it, I don't have room for this. Yeah, so then he's gonna strip all that off, and then we'll feed it because yeah, it's if we try to feed it with the insulation on, we'll never get past the meter where we don't want to take the meter off. So we're just gonna send it one wire at a time, um, and once we get them through where we need to without shocking the shit out of ourselves. Okay. Um, Pull right here. Okay. No, no wire. Here we go. So, go ahead. You'll get it. Ready? Yeah. Pull. Pull like a man. Pull like a man. I told you, cut it at twelve inches at a time. There we go. <laughs> Let's see what we got. Okay. So there we go. Now he's gonna try to feed that to me. And hopefully that bare wire doesn't touch anything. It shouldn't. <laughs> it won't. There's a channel. There's a divider. Okay. And I'm going to tape it on the tip. So when you get the tip, you're just going to guide it away. Okay. I just don't want that ground to touch nothing. It's fine. Just You'll be the point. Yeah. I'll feed it to you, Dad. <laughs> okay. We got Vinny out here playing with these wires. He's got his ground going to the bar and now he's going with his neutral mm -hmm. and then of course he's routing them nicely along here as nice as he can and then um now this microwave will be on its own circuit and there won't be no more lights dimming it's about 4 p.m right now we've been here since about 8 8 15 Alicia's changed almost every outlet in this house and all the bedrooms. We've got a few more outlets to do tomorrow. She's in here doing the last bedroom right here. Say hi, Al. Hello. Um, she stopped and left for a while to take our daughter to cheerleading. She's a varsity cheerleader. She's a flyer, so... I guess her small size is good for something over there. She's sort of like Alicia, small and skinny, so they put her as a flyer over there. The only thing we got is this office over here to do, and we're going to let them tonight move everything around. That way we don't have to disconnect anything that we shouldn't be disconnecting. But Alicia's been moving furniture as much as possible to get to things and working around different things. Okay, guys, I just turned on the main, and I just turned on the new breaker, and Vinny is checking to make sure we got 120 over there and not 220, all right? Okay, how are we doing? It's right there. It's what do we got? 119? That looks good. Perfect. It's perfect. Okay. Now I'm going to turn on that light. Let's turn. Why is that playing around? That, oh, I know what that's. It's a dimmer. That's a dimmer. Okay. Let's put that up. Okay. Now. And um, no, go ahead and put some water in there. There is. Okay. Put it on um, 10 minute. minutes. 10, 10 minutes. minutes. Okay. Oh, I plug it in. oh, yeah. Try plugging it in. It'll work better. Oops. Sorry. Okay, now put it on 10 minutes, and let's see what we got here. 
Look at that. Let's do this one too. Okay. I mean, every everything pulls a little bit, but yeah, it's not. See. Before no. it would dim down, and yeah. it would stay dim down. It bogged. It bogged down. Yeah. Okay, so here, let's put. Oops, sorry. Which is the life? Oh, the first one it just takes a minute. Wait, let it. Oh, I see. It takes a second. Okay, so now we're good here. I'll focus on that. Because this would dim down too. So go ahead, start it up. Yeah. Perfect. Look at that. Is that different? Uh, that's pretty stable. Yeah. And I think you'll get better results when we put the new dimmer on. Because this dimmer is a little bit tweakish. Yeah. Yeah, for, yeah for so. Um, Alright, let's see what we got going on here. Let's see. Okay, guys, I've got some 1x2s cut here. And um, they're on a piece of plastic here. Um, basically, when I set these 1x2s in, Rather than shaving all the way to the, rather than shaving this all the way to that, I can double stack these. I can put one here like that. And I can put another one on top of that if I want. Um, Alicia doesn't like me to bring it all the way to the drywall. Um, she likes to have it in just a little bit. That way the repair pieces that we took out will sit deeper. Um, um, and not so much flush because sometimes they don't fit flush. They, they stand out a little bit. Um, so she likes me to set the wood just a little bit deeper than usual. And that way her drywall pieces sit in. And she has a little bit of a belly to fill. And um, it just turns out better for her. That's just the way she wants it done. Now we're going to tie this Romex right to this conduit right here with some plastic ties. Um... And we're going to put another one by two here and then a couple here. Then we're going to put our drywall pieces back and then Alicia will plaster it up. I'm just going to use a little finish nailer just to tack it because trying to put screws in it, it moves around. So I'll, I'll take my finish nailer, the little DeWalt over there, and I'll tack a couple finish nails in. And then I'll pre-drill this and put some screws. That way it don't ever move. So I just tack it with a finish nailer in two spots. And then um, I pre-drill the wood, and I go ahead and put some um, screws in it, like maybe three of them, just to give it extra security so it doesn't move over the years. I don't like using finish nailers by finish nails by themselves. Um, they can move a little bit, and so I like to put nails. And then as it goes along, I'll show you how we do it. I'm not saying it's the right way. It's just the way we do it over the years is just what we kind of like doing. Okay guys, when you're going to shoot kind of like an angle like this, you want to set this deeper, but remember to put it back because you'll be shooting through the baseboard next time. So I always set it where it's going to shoot a little bit deeper, and I've already got this one in, but just a demo. If you're going to be an angle like that, then see, that's nice and flush. My first one was sticking out. Now, to give Alicia a little bit more room to work with, um, I'm going to put two of these in. So I make sure I flush it out on the bottom first. So about right there. And that's nice. Then up here, a little bit like that. That's nice. And then, that's nice. So what I do now is this will set in a little bit deeper and allow her to get a little bit more fill on. She'd rather have it that way rather than going like that. Now I'm just going to put a couple more here and, and then fill on this spot here. Okay, this is on the plastic. Alright guys. Okay guys, we've got it all framed in just where we need it. This is all we need. I had some scrap in the truck. That'll hold the drywall plenty. So basically, I made sure that my screws were an inch and a quarter and all I could fill is just a little bit of a nipple coming through. So we're good. We're good all over. Um, so, and I want it, we zip tied this to here. I wanted this with staples over here, staples to here, but I told Vinny to go up and staple them up on the, in the attic. That way if the cable guy's in there and he trips on it, he doesn't jerk our wires out of the wall, you know, cause people go up there and they run cable TV and stuff, um, or the phone company. So you want to make sure all your Romex is stapled from there all the way over there, about every seven inches or so. Um, 
so over here I forgot to pull it and give me some slack to staple so this is we're not gonna go unstaple it you know so this is better than nothing and um, um, this is going into the box with a connector let me see here I think I showed it in the other video um, you can see the connector back well you can't see it but if you look earlier in the video you'll see it right in there with you can barely see the connector i think i got some video of it before i put this on all right let's go and see what's next we'll let alicia take over here and uh, go from there also i was just talking to Vinny, and then he said he put two staples right on that top rail he put one right where it comes over with a little bend and then of course before he made the turn he put another one so that's all i'm worried about nobody if, if somebody trips on the cable up there it's not going to pull this one Bit because he's got two staples right where it comes out of the top plate and and so it ain't gonna go nowhere so basically i know you know that we shouldn't be doing zip ties but we did it because i'm not going to have him go up there and pull all the staples and damage the romex and then what we got to put a junction box in there where we damage it it's not worth it nobody's going to be in this wall nobody's going to trip it's all up there as long as it's secure from where it comes out of the top plate and it goes all the way down we're good to go Okay, Elise is over here doing something with her drywall. You want to explain what you're doing? I'm just smoothing. Hey, hey, say hello. Say good morning. Good morning. Just smoothing the edges. Okay. So when I put it on them, they just go all the way there. I can fill in. Instead cool. of sticking out around it, it's going to be flat. Okay. That's a bit of technique I do. Okay. Go ahead. Also, when you cut the drywall, for some reason over here, it kind of flares. Yeah. So I kind of make it cut it out. Trim it off. That way it's his flash. All right. Sounds good. All right, guys. Alicia's putting the drywall to it. She sets the screws in just a little bit, just to dimple them in a little bit after she cleans all the edges off. Okay, we'll see how it gets done here in just a little bit. Okay, Alicia is trying to explain something here to but Vinny. My biggest mistake. I used to think that you need to cut it so perfect, and that way you can put it back in place, and it'll be perfect. But it's a big mistake. I'll tell you why. Because when you cut it out, it, the edges they're gonna be even, so there's no room for your drywall. Mud. With the mud, yeah. So it, when you cut it this way and you have gaps, your mud goes in between. Then you can tape over it. One piece. It, mm -hmm. it actually. Um, welds the, the two pieces together and, it stronger. and plus you put tape over it and then you put of course it with a tape and then you have room to mud a little bit and then feather the right. edges otherwise when it's even like that there's no room for mud and on top of it you have to build up so you're gonna have a big belly and so you want it flat as the other thing as is possible. is that she learned we had a contractor that did no sanding every patch he did he only did patchwork no drywall he only did repair work holes and stuff and he never had to break out a sheet of sandpaper because when he's done, he either wet sands it a little bit with a, a sponge, a special sponge, or he just trawls it to death until it's right where he wants it and no sanding required. And that's, normally, that's, that's how she does it, no sanding. It's just like when you cut this one, it's so rough, you know, a lot of rough on that thing. And then when you put plaster, there's no way to plaster. So you need to cut out, make it smoother. That way when you put it on, you got room. All righty. All right, guys, she's got that ready to go. She's going to put a little mud in the voids and then put her tape and then a little mud over the tape. All right, guys, she's getting all set up. This is her tools that she's going to be using. We use five minute smooth set or West Pack. They now own smooth set. And guys, you, I know there's a lot of tape or no tape we always use tape but you can actually use this with no tape we've done small patch jobs and and this stuff never cracks um, um, we've done like eight, eight maybe like eight feet of um, linear feet of um, some seams and we still go back to that building years later and um, there's no and we only did it because 
we didn't have no mud and we put it on just to fill the void and it looks so damn good we decided to see what happens and there's been a lot of talk about smooth set on their website years ago where they were bragging that you don't need tape and so far it's held up but we do small patches without tape um and we still go back to those buildings years later and they're beautiful but we just for the record we do use tape yeah. You would have shimmed that uh, wood on the other side. Okay, guys, she's got a high spot in that corner. I guess I might have screwed up a little bit. Anyway, she's just peeling the drywall back, and then she sets the screws a little bit tighter um, so they're not poking out, and then she retapes it. All right, guys, she's mudding up the wall. Um. I'm not going to sit here and let me just show them the consistency of your mud. About like that. And that's five minute hot mud. So, um, spreads it out with the little trawl first, gets it where she wants. She likes to pack it into the voids through the tape. She don't like to just skim over the tape and the tape takes whatever it takes. What she does is she likes to pack it in through the tape and fill the void up a little bit. That way it all kinds of welds, kind of welds together. Uh, so you can see she's packing it into the tape so it goes through the tape and into the voids like that. So then she'll worry about whatever she's got to do and then she may wet sand it or maybe not depending on, but she won't use sandpaper. This thing will be ready to texture with no sandpaper. Okay guys, this is basically her first coat. This is what you get for the first coat right here. You can see somebody did a patch job right here and they left it real rough. We're gonna fix that. Um, we'll probably have to sand this. Um, but anyway, that's her first coat. We don't worry about it too much. She doesn't worry about little imperfections like that right now. This is five minute mud, so it's gonna dry fast. Okay guys, she's getting ready to do her second coat, but before she does it, she goes along all the high, high spots and shaves them. And then down here, I thought she was going to sand the other guy's patch, that patch underneath it that's really rough. She's just scraping it. She's just kind of digging into it and uh, scraping the hell out of it and kind of putting a little belly in it. And then she's going to gloss over it, um, skim over it. But she's just prepping for the next coat. Okay guys, that's her second coat. She scraped out that bad patch job that was underneath. It looks like somebody's already been in that pa um, that panel, the electrical box. Yeah, so and they did like a really lousy patch. Hers is doing really good. It's nice and level. She took a 12 inch. I, I missed half of it because I'm working with Vinny over here. But she took her 12 inch trawl and skim coated it with the 12 inch after she mudded it in with the smaller one. Now guys, when I say she don't sand, she don't dry sand, she wet sands. Basically, this is a drywall sponge with coarse and fine on it. The white is coarse, the other is fine. And then what she does is she rubs it in and then she uses her 12 inch trawl. This will sand? That'll sand. It's go like that on the dry area. Uh-huh. Like that, right? Uh-huh, and then what do you use the other side for? Yeah. See, you just go like. That really don't help much. You see that? Yeah. You go like that? Let me see if I can do something with the light like that. There you go. That's better. Like that. Right? All right. Here, here. The edges. Yeah. Like that. And, and then? Use your 12 inch? A small one. Small one? Yeah, because I said it. Okay, then what? What's the 12 inch for? The 12 inch because I'm going to go and even From it out. From the even it out. Yeah. Okay, while it's drying. Yeah. See that? Yeah, so a little wet and then like and then that. And this one is just to collect all that Wet, okay. Water. As you can see, she's rubbing that in all the way around, sanding it, wet sanding it, no powder, no dust. She'll rinse that out. But then when we're done, we just use cam wall. This job, you can't charge enough to set up a hopper and and use um, um, texture and run your compressor and your air hose. They're not going to pay for that. All they're basically going to pay for is this and we gotten pretty good with it we put it real fine and when we spray it we just don't spray that area we'll end up probably using most of that can what we'll do 
is we'll start off in that area and as we will start off on a piece of cardboard and then once we find what we like and it's adjusted right then we start off in that area and we don't do much we give it like two or three coats until we get it we don't try to put it all on at one time so what we do is we'll spray two or three light coats and then when we get it then we start spraying off to the left off to the right underneath it until we spread it out quite a bit and once we get it spread out quite a bit then it's done and then we paint okay guys she's got one more skim coat to do and she's done she feathered it all in with the sponge got it completely flat and now the last skim coat is basically for the edges and in the center um, and then we can put the texture to it and that'll be that Okay, she's mixing up her final coat. Now, do you make that the same consistency of the other two, or do you do something special with the last coat? I make it more um, loose. More loose? Yeah. Okay. Yeah. Not too stiff. Because, Not too stiff? No, because it's already drying, so if I make it too stiff, it's going to get filled up and still applying. I'm sorry. I'm sorry. What are you interrupting for? I was asking for the plastic box, because it sounds really weird when I put it. Oh, let me see. I'll be there in a minute. What's wrong with it, Vinny? I'll let you hear it. What is it? The switch? Yeah. What's wrong with it? It's a switch, Vinny. That's why I said I'll let you hear it. Oh, okay. <laughs> Alright, she's going to give that the final coat. Okay. How about if you shoot it up to the wall a little bit so it doesn't mess up the, like that? Can you live with that? Yeah. Okay. Okay, she's cleaning all the crap off her blade. That way it doesn't streak. Yeah, mine's good. Oh, wonderful. Looking good, Al. Let's get her on the... Let's start slinging that mud before it gets hard in the pan. Yeah. I just forgot to clean my blade. You clean... You don't clean your blade and then you're going to have... Rocks. Drag lines and all that. Yes. Okay. So what I usually do is... You want me to get rid of that? I put it right here. Okay. There you go. Right there. Uh, sling that mud. Shovel I can see that you're not taking a whole lot off, which is good. It means you're not overkilling it. Like I say, you make it so runny, they just took over the little holes. And also to feather. It helps to feather. Yeah, the whole thing is the edge. You really want to feather those edges. It's looking real good. Funny how the last coat really looks good, and the fact that there's no sanding. Now, will you wet sand that final coat later, just on the edges or something? Yeah. Okay. I do. And I'm gonna work on that area that you put. Oh yeah, that's the area that they fixed. You scraped it, and so it's fine. Yeah, it looks good. It's like it never happened. See those lines right there? Yeah. I go back to those with the wet sanding. With the wet sanding. Okay. Same with the feathering. Okay. So. I'll go back at it. Okay, so it's looking good. Okay. Yeah, those little lines she's going to take out with wet sanding. Those lines, okay. So now we'll just let that dry. And let me see how much you used out of that tray. Not much. Not much. Okay, good. Looks great. Okay, I turned around. 
and she's back at it. I guess I was making her nervous with the camera, but it's looking good. All right, well, I'll leave you alone. That's looking really good. And I guess after you wet sand it, we can texture it. Yeah. All right. Sounds good. Cool. Yep. Oh, that looks really good. Oop. Good job, Al. Smile. Oh, look at that smile. You go, girl. She's cleaning her pan. When she cleans that pan, she cleans all the rocks. Take a notice of that. Last time I had you clean the pan, Vinny, it looked like water. Yeah. You used to clean it and you didn't give me no yeah, water. Yeah, look, she makes that spotless. That way, the next time she needs it, show the pan now. Yeah, you don't want no rocks. She don't want no rocks in there and dragging it in the streets. Yeah, look at her go. Here you go, girl. All right. I'm going to go work on the receptacles. You got the ring? Well, we're waiting for the drywall to dry over there, the mud. Vinny's doing the rest of the outlets in the garage. And then Alicia is under here doing a couple outlets. One for the dishwasher and one for the garbage disposal. We almost got every outlet done in the house. Um, hopefully, we got all the furniture moved and did all the out every single outlet. Um, the only one we didn't do was... This with the bookcase, um, they don't want to mess with it, and I get it. We did behind the piano, so we're good there. So now we're just waiting for this to dry. I don't know why we left the light on, but I'll turn that off. But as you can see, up close, let me see if that helps. That was the last skim coat. And then what she'll do with that is um, after she's done with that, or when that dries thoroughly, I mean like rock hard, then she'll take her sponge with the sanding, the coarse side, she'll coarse it, coarse sand it with water, no dust or anything, and then she puts the smooth side and blends it in and then takes her trowel one or two times and it's ready for texture. So we'll be able to put the paint on it by maybe 2.30 today. Okay guys, she's sanding with her sponge. This is the last coat right here. She let it dry thoroughly. It's 10 minute or five minute smooth set. And so she's left it alone for about an hour because she was doing outlets. Uh, so it's pretty much rock hard. And um, she's using her sponge, feathering the edges. And then she'll kind of lean into the center. So this will probably go on for the next 10 minutes or so and then it'll be ready for texture okay guys it's all done we're gonna let the fan dry it out a little bit and then we'll put the texture to it yeah when's lunch no lunch okay guys they want us to replace I wanted to replace it all but they just want me to cut and put a new gate valve here. So we're going to do that. I think today, rather than solder it, um, because the water shut off at the street has a small drip. Hey, well, guys, whenever you have a small drip, let's say the water at the street doesn't turn off. There's a way to remedy that. If you go to the shutoff, um, there's a pipe that goes from your house to the meter. And there's a big nut with a rubber gasket. I always carry those rubber gaskets. You can break that line, go into the meter shutoff. And what'll happen is while that valve is leaking, instead of going up your pipes and into your house and out where you're trying to solder, um, it'll keep the water, it'll fill up the water in that. Um, if it's dripping a lot, it'll fill up the meter hole and you can just get a cup and take it out depending on how long you're going. But usually when I've had to do that before I had a pro press, um, um, I usually got the job done before the water was filled up too far and I also have a hand pump but in this case that meter has a small drip and undoing that nut which I'll show you guys when we go to turn the water back on since we turned it off I'll show you the nut that you can loosen and you kind of just break you don't have to take the nut off you just kind of tap it at, loosen it and tap it and you'll see the water start going out and Home Depot has those little rubbers in case for instance you tighten it back up 
and it drips you can buy the little rubber that goes in there i think they're inch and three quarter or something like that it's just a gasket and you can pull the gasket out and take it to home depot that they have it and you just put that new rubber between the line and the meter and that'll stop that drip if it doesn't seal up anyway we're probably going to pro press this one today keep the phone away so it doesn't fly everywhere um, I think I'll cut it and let it drain a little bit I don't like getting once you get all this wet man your bearings start rusting and, well, mine mine's dated and mine's the one with the, uh, the 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 attachment on the back the old DeWalt oh it is yeah you okay, want to yeah let's, let's do squeeze mine let's do is it going yeah okay, I'm just gonna do it until it starts to spray I think, yeah. Guys, I know you can throw these in the water, but once this gets all soaking wet in here, it rusts up your bearings. And it's better just to bleed it a little bit and then finish it up. Keep it as level as possible. You might be level here, but if the pipe ain't level, you're going to get a crooked cut. So you kind of look at the pipe. And kind of see which way it's tilted and try to go with it. Okay, so now if we're going to heat this up and drop it, we got to cut at least about. There. Right, guys? Let's see. Okay guys, now that looks pretty square. Then you'll have to clean all that up, get all that off. Uh, that isn't dripping too bad. I mean, it's not, I thought it'd be puking water because of that valve, but maybe we got that valve a little tighter this time. Okay, what we'll do is we'll heat this up, drop it, clean everything up, and go from there. By the way guys, don't get fooled with this stuff here. This ain't real mouth gas. Um, they don't make it no more, but they still label it like this, but it is hotter than straight propane. Some people say, oh, just use propane. Um, it's the same. Well, it is and it isn't. This will actually get a little bit hotter from what I understand. Um, it's got like a, it's got a mixture of propane and a few other things to give it a little bit of an advantage over propane, but it's not like before. Like burns matic yeah. It says plus. Yeah. If you look on it on online, it. it says propane. Okay, guys, I just wrapped this. I don't want this joint getting hot or too hot. Even though I'm way down here, I just I, I get in the habit of just um, I get in the habit of just wrapping them. not to burn his fence down. When 
that starts to spark and you get a little bit, you'll see that solder start to pop out of it and you're pretty much ready to go. You can see in the back it's popping solder. You can see the solder come out. And you shouldn't have your flame all the way up like that. Have a little room between the dark blue and where it fades. Hey, can you give me a towel? Actually, I could solder this because the, the main isn't dripping like I thought it was. But I already went to Home Depot and bought the Pro Press shit, so let's have fun with it. I'm only doing that because I really don't need to worry about it if I'm using Pro Press. But I want to see if the main is dripping. So I figure if it fills up by the time I'm done, they'll tell me something. But I might have emptied it too much, but who cares? Can you do that oh. again? How about if I work your ass with this hose? A little bit below the line? Yeah. Right there? Yeah. Hey guys, you can see we're all set up for soldering. We got everything we need for soldering. All the stuff here. And I'll be honest with you, I love soldering. But today we're going to Pro Press. Pro Press is just, it's like, can't knock it because if you have a wet condition, it does great. But there's just something about soldering. Now, my problem with soldering is I overkill. My solders are usually uglier than hell, but. I can't remember the last time I had one leak. I think I can't, I'm not patting myself on the back. I'm just saying I can't remember ever having a leak when I soldered. But I do overkill and my solders are nasty looking. Just, just way too much. But they work out. Here we got our inch valve and no stop couplings. And um, we should be good to go soon. Vinny's going to fit it all right now. All right, Vinny, what are you doing here? You're cleaning up the pie show much you're using. Everybody knows what this is probably by now right there. He cleans the birds with that. And um, does the inside and the outside. And then he'll polish it all up. That way when we put our um, coupling or, or um, no stop, we don't mess up that ring inside there when we go up and down with it. Make sure everything is smooth as can be. Okay guys, Vinny's got everything cut. Um, he's just dry fitting it to make sure everything works before um, we blow the line out. Because see, we've cut that line two times. And all the shavings and grindings went in the pipe. Um, so what we do is once he's all done fitting it, we'll shove a rag in the top part of the pipe and we'll open the main and blow out the bottom part of the paint, uh, pi uh, the, the, we'll blow out the bottom part of the pipe and by having a rag in the upper part, it won't blow the particles up in there because 
if you don't flush out the bottom part of the pipe and then we just go ahead and pro press everything on and then we open up the valve that's going to go to its faucets its shower head its shower valves next thing you know everything's clogged up so he'll pro he'll go ahead and fit it and looks good let me see what you got man everything looks beautiful he's got everything marked with his pen um so now i wanted to do the whole damn thing but the only the owner only right let there. me do the the we can, valve we can press everything okay so let's um take it out now i can't just kidding <laughs> you <laughs> don't take it all out and let's um blow the line okay 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 guys we're gonna blow this line okay guys we're gonna go ahead and blow that go ahead turn it on and off Come on, blast it. All the way. Okay, turn it off. That'll work. One more time. Yeah, one more time, all the way. Okay, that's good. Turn it off. That'll work. All right, what do you got? Then you can put it back together. You got all your marks. Cool. That one all the this way. This one's flush. Okay, mark it. Hey, you know where your marks are. What the hell? This is the only one with the mark. The B. Okay. Is this going down? Okay. Now what do you have in there? Okay, you got your slip right coupling there. in there. Okay. So you made your own slip coupling. Right there. Okay, got it. Okay, put it together. Quit playing with the spiders. They don't get, I don't get them, they get me. Okay, so he cut that, that's all the way in. This piece is all the way in. And then he cut a piece exactly to fit that space right um, with enough to make his own coupling. There, two, so two slips on here. Two slips on one pipe, and that slips perfect, so there's no gap. Everything is at its full potential. Okay. But here's the B. So that's one I really want to focus on. Okay. B, that mark. Okay. So it's halfway in there. Okay, perfect. The other half's going to be in there because it's already flushed. There. Right, because it's flush. Yeah. Okay, so basically I there's get what the metal you did. Right there. Okay. Same thing what I do when I solder. I thought we were doing something special for the pro press, but it's nothing. Same as when I solder, right? Yeah. Same old shit. Except we're pressing instead of. And there's that mark. Mm hmm. Let me get a little more. Right there. See that mark? Uh huh. Everything's in tight. Put the valve straight. Yeah. Does that look straight? Well, we don't have to really worry about that yet until we get there. Okay, so you're going to start on the bottom or what? Okay, well anyway, Vinny's got his pro press. And he's got rings for it. So obviously he's gonna have to put take off this activator and put this activator on. Actuator. Actuator, whatever the fuck. And then he'll put his rings on to get to it. Alright, go ahead. Is that the all right, this is Vinny's new toy. He's got his um, rings for tight spaces, and he's got his um, half inch all the way up to um, two inch. What did this set you back? Hmm? What did this set you back? Thirty-seven plus seventeen. Mm -hmm. I think he paid thirty-six something oh, for that, flat. and seventeen for that plus tax or something. Boy, just give me a soldering torch and some solder, and I'm all good. <laughs> Anyway, this is nice though, especially if you have wet conditions. Okay, you got your ring? Yeah, hold this. Okay, oh, I get to hold this. Yeah, big boy. Okay. Make sure you're in those holes. Are you on those dimples? Yeah. Cool. Turn. Oh hell. Let it go on. Let's turn it on. Okay. Time. Okay. Dimples. You know you could. Pressing. 
Okay, next one. You want to hold that for me? Okay, you got it. There. Okay. I can see how this can get dirty. I can see how you need those rings. At first, I didn't think you'd need them that much, but I can see where you do need them. Make sure that's straight. I always yeah. make sure those are straight. Yeah, now since I'm getting closer, it looks straight. That's good. Well, right? I'll, I'll tell you after. Crimp that one and then I'll move it where I want it. That's really important to have a straight handle. Turn it more to the right. You're not in the holes. There no, you I go. I just don't want to turn that. Don't worry about that. That's still adjustable. Okay, now let me put it where I want it. So if I go here, I put it up like that, and then I want the handle about right there. You want this handle up or yeah. you want it down? Uh, that's good. Okay, that's good. Go ahead. Put your ring on and hold that. Well, that is a lot faster than solder, and then worrying about it. And then me, I always overkill on the solder. Here, Al. He's on his last one. See how that rings get him in there close? Because he can do it with the other head, but that gets him in there. Okay, it's done. So now put the valve down and let's open the water. See what happens. Or close it so we get some flow. Yeah, I'm gonna close it. Or close that. Now I just want to leave close the valve and then yeah. we'll we'll open this because I want all the water, the dirty water from the main to come out the hose. I got the hose open over there as well on the other side. That way we don't dirty up the lines. We'll leave both hoses open and flush some of it out. Go turn it on. Okay. Hopefully we don't have no leaks. Okay, go ahead, turn it on. Okay. Um, no, but your valve is off here, so don't worry about it. Are you open? All the way? Go ahead. Get it done. All done? All right, no leaks so far. Okay. Yeah, this one's gonna go slow. Yeah. Right. Yeah. Close it all up. I'm just gonna I'm gonna blow it out the two hoses. I got a hose. What I want to do is blow out everything. You know how when you shut the main off, it gets all dirty. So I got the hose over there open. So let's just open it and blow the water here and blow it over there. Go ahead and open it, Vinny, slowly, and let's blow the two lines out. I got both hose bibs open. Blow it for about five, four, four, four seconds, five seconds. Not too much where you make a mess. Go ahead, let it rip. All the way. Go ahead, let it run for a minute. It's filling up the house too, though, hard. No, I got both hose bibs open, and you're going slow. Go check everything inside, Mom. Okay, I'm gonna go. Go ahead and stop it. I'm gonna go shut the water hose. You can shut the water hose and then turn it on slow, so you don't shock the lines. I close that off, right? All right, guys. I'm gonna go back here and shut the hose off over here. And then we can open it all up. And I guess we can call this job done here. Now we're going to go texture the wall inside. And hopefully it will dry. And um, 
we can paint it before we go home today. Okay. Hey guys, what we're doing is we're putting the texture on. It got, we started playing with it. We adjusted it outside. Here on these big spots, Alicia just takes a sponge and dots it with a sponge and it knocks the big globs down to little globs. But we're almost done. We're almost out here. But I did the patches right here. I did all the way to the fireplace down into here and kind of blended it. I only have a little bit left right there. And I'm just kind of going where I think I need it. And then. I go way past it. Now what she'll do is, because you got to remember my hole's right here. So I go way past it to kind of blend it. I'm just trying to use what's left in the, the can. And anything that she doesn't like, she'll just take the sponge and blot it. And it's done, just like that. And it's good enough for what we can do with a can. But, and, and it kind of goes on with a little bluish um, tint to it. And here you can see where it's wet because I've already done two coats. So this is the fresh, this is the dry part. And I kind of went in where, you know. So anyway, once we roll it, it'll, it'll look pretty good. So let's let that dry and then we'll paint it. No, it's just a texture. Okay, guys, she's got it all textured out, and she took her spatch, her sponge and knocked down the real high spots, um, the, the spray, those big dots that came out. And there's no lines. We're doing good. Now we're going to put some paint on it and call it a night. Okay, guys, she's cutting around it with a brush all the way around. She's going to finish off that. And then she's going to roll the wall. So she's got her paint... She's got her brush, she's got a roller, and it's just a matter of time till it's rolled. She's gonna put it on thick and heavy, that way one coat does it. It's that bare paint with primer, one coat, special. Yeah. Oh, we're gonna have to. <laughs> okay, she's getting it rolled, and you can't tell where the hole was. Yeah, so. Wow, that's really good. That's the idea, right? Not to leave a, see that? Let's yeah. see, keep it lit up. You don't see it. It was right here. Cool. Yeah. Okay, guys. She's just putting the plate on the outlet, but everything is done. She put the paint thick and heavy. No, I think it's better without the light. Let's see. Yeah, that's a pitcher hanger. And then she painted, trimmed it all the way around, so everything's looking good. Well, guys, I think... That's gonna do it for here. We've been here two days with all the outlets, pulling a new circuit, fixing the wall, putting in a new ball valve. Um, it's starting to dry. You can see here it's shiny and it's, and it, cause this is satin finish. Uh -huh. So here you can see it's wet and here it's starting to dry right here. But it looks great. All right guys, we'll see you on the next video. You wanna say bye y'all? Bye.